Hey everybody, this is Jen. Today I'm going to be taking you out to my kitchen, but we're not going to be cooking. We're going to be making soap. Dandelion soap, that is, right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Okay, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you a very special soap that I make. Um, this is the Dandy Lion Soap. Um, it's a soap that I created after watching uh, some other YouTubers who uh, make it. It's a really, really neat soap. Um, this is made with the whole dandelion plant uh, in it. And uh, it's just a really, really nice bar of soap. It's all natural, no fragrances or anything in it. Um, and I'll show you today how I make this particular soap. <clears throat> So, of course, the star ingredient in the dandelion soap is dandelions. Now, I harvested these a couple years ago from uh, my own uh, garden. I do organic gardening, so I know that these do not have any um, herbicides, pesticides, or anything like that in it. Completely organic. So, I uh, harvested these just when the blooms opened up, and I um, harvested them early in the morning before the sun got too high. And then uh, I dehydrated them, so I have them for use now. So these are the flowers. I also dug up the roots. And uh, same thing, I dehydrated them, and then I ground them up in my um, coffee grinder as best as possible. These are very hard roots, and uh, so they're, they're a little hard to grind up. So I use the flowers and the roots in the usually the leaves but I could not find my leaves so but uh, that's what I use in there and then to color it let's go back to the example here so I have the flowers in the bottom portion and then I use the roots here as a dividing line uh, for, kind of for exfoliation and then in the top I also uh, have some flowers in there but uh, to color the top I use another botanical this is a natto seed powder and it uh, gives a lovely uh, either orange or if you use a little bit less kind of more of a yellow but beautiful beautiful color and then today um, I'm going to add just a little more green to the bottom uh, just a little bit and another herbal benefit with green tea powder so we're going to be adding that today First things first though, we got to get the soap base ready. I've already got my lye uh, getting ready to go. Um, you mix your water and then uh, lye, I use sodium hydroxide. And you let that sit for a while because when you first mix it, you can see this is sitting on a hot pad. This gets to about 280 degrees, so it's very, very hot. So you need this to cool back down before you start working with it. So um, generally for soaping you want to be below 130 degrees with your lye and also with the oils that you're going to mix with it. You want them to be around the same temperature. I tend to mix it or I tend to soap at about 110 degrees just to make sure it stays cooler so my soap doesn't start gelling too fast and I can work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting my oils. And I use four different oils in my soap. I just find that the oils that I use make a very nice bar of soap that is uh, it's nice and hard, um, but it's very moisturizing. It does not dry out your skin, and it lathers up really, really good. Um, so this is what I've come up with with my uh, recipe. I use, uh, get this out of the way, I use coconut oil, and I buy this in bulk. Uh, it's a lot cheaper that way olive oil, canola oil, and uh, this is castor oil. You can find this in small bottles in your pharmacy, but I order big bottles from a wholesale soap supplier. So I'm going to put these in my bucket 
and then I'll show you how I go ahead and make the actual soap. Okay, so we're back. The lye has cooled down and the oils are about the same temperature. So about 102, 114. So we're going to go ahead and get them mixed. We're going to use a stick blender and just blend this till it reaches um, emulsification, which means the lye and the oil are have mixed together and it'll be a little bit thicker. Okay, you can see how it's kind of a different color. That means the emulsification has taken place. You can see it leaves a trace on here and that's what soapers call trace. That's where you want it to be to move on to the next step. So the next step for us is going to be dividing this into two containers because we're coloring two different portions. Okay, so I have this big bucket and this bucket. So into this bucket, we're going to add our green tea powder. And we're just gonna mix that in by hand. That way we're not making it get too thick too fast. It's kind of that earthy green that we're looking for. And we're also gonna add a, a, just a sprinkle of the dried dandelion flowers. But this bucket, we're adding our annatto seed powder and mixing that in by hand. All right, there we go. And again, we're going to add a, a nice pinch of the dandelion flowers in there. I'm going to use the hand blender to blend this a little bit longer because we do have some chunks of the tea, but then we're ready to pour. All right, there we go. So I'm going to take our mold that I've already lined with freezer paper. My husband made these molds out of scrap lumber and they've served me well for quite a few years. So we're going to put it in our bottom layer first. Now we're going to take our ground dandelion root here and sprinkle it on the top of that just to give it a nice dividing line and some exfoliation like so and then we're going to take our other jug and carefully because we don't want to break the level here so right here is going to be more of a swirl because it broke through that really fast but that's all right out quite a bit. Okay, now we're going to take the top and we're going to grab some more of our dandelion flowers here and just carefully put it in. just to add a little more something something to it we're going to sprinkle some of the root on top too now last thing we want to do before we let this sit for 24 hours is we're going to give it a good spray with the 91 percent rubbing alcohol this helps prevent what's called soda ash which is the sodium hydroxide the uh some of the components that evaporate too quickly and it looks like ash on the top of your soap. 
So this keeps everything evaporating at an even pace and you don't have that problem. So I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours and then I will bring you guys back and show you what it looks like when we get it all cut up. So see you guys in a few minutes your time and in 24 hours mine. Okay, so we are back to cut this soap up. It's been around 18 hours, but it's hard as a rock. So it's time to get this out of the mold and onto our soap cutter and get this baby cut up. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present. So there we go. Unwrapped and ready to cut. There we go. Quite pretty. I'm going to turn it over on its side here so we're not dragging the dandelion through the soap. There we go. So pretty good. I like how it turned out. It's really dark green. Probably looks more black on the uh, video. But as it starts to cure, we'll see what the actual resulting color will be. The orange really turned out nice and orange. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but the speckles of the Anato seed powder, uh, you can definitely see. So that is the Dandelion Soap. Again, it's 100% all natural. Thanks for watching everybody. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you can stay updated with things we do here on the journey. And as always, I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.